Welcome back to Images in Black and White. One of the most significant stories in sports since the early 1970s has been the growth of women's athletics, the most dramatic being the rise of women's basketball. In 2004, the U.S. women's Olympic basketball team won a third consecutive gold medal. But the stage for U.S. domination was set in 1976, when women's basketball became a medal sport in the Olympics. The U.S. captured a silver medal in Montreal with players like Pat Summitt, Ann Myers, and Nancy Lieberman. But the engine of the team, the most dominant college player of her era, was a quiet storm named Lucy Harris. There's a good feed off to Lucy Harris of Delta State, and she has it. That was the first basket in the history of Olympic women basketball. The fact that Lucy did score that first basket, um, you look back now and you think how significant it was. After the game, Ann Meyer said, do you realize you've made history? And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, you scored the first basket in women's Olympics. That just kind of stands out in my mind, you know. A record that will never be broken. Yeah, will always be. When you know the history of the game, you know that Lucy had the impact that will always be remembered by those that understand the first ever Women's Olympics in 1976. Lucy Harris helped us win a silver medal. Without her, we don't win a silver medal. Harris led the Olympic team in scoring and rebounding, averaging 15.2 points and seven rebounds. She was also a woman of contrast. Lucy is the nicest, most thoughtful, gentle, kind individual. She was quiet. She was uh, more reserved. Timid off the court. Yeah, she didn't speak up. It was very soft-spoken. But when the game starts, she's tough. She's intense. She's physical. Nobody could stop her. I tell you, unless I got out on that floor. <laughs> That ball was mine. <laughs> and she dunked it to Lucy Harris, and she has it to make it 63-53. Her power in the game, there were not any centers built like her. And uh, once she got it, she was so quick going to the basket. And when she went up for a shot, it was almost like everyone else just fell away from her. She was like Shaquille O'Neal. So strong and physical but great hands and great touch around the basket and a dominant, a dominant center. Harris was born in 1955 in Minter City, Mississippi and starred at Amanda Elsey High School in nearby Greenwood. Delta State University was building a women's basketball program and wanted her to be the cornerstone. Although the school was less than an hour away from her home, Harris found herself in a different world. She was the only African-American on her team at Delta State. And the crossover into the racial barriers of, of Mississippi in the 1970s, uh, that had been a certain sort of isolation. People would say things from the stands, but I would just brush it off because I said, it's just part of the game. You know, trying to get me distracted from what I'm doing. Harris blocked out the taunts and led Delta State to three consecutive AIAW national championships. The six-foot-three center finished as the school's all-time leading scorer. In 1980, she became an assistant coach at Delta State before getting the head coaching job at Texas Southern four years later. But Harris never got what she wanted, the opportunity to return to Cleveland, Mississippi as head coach of her alma mater. Of all the accomplishments that I had made in women's basketball and for Delta State, it was a disappointment not to be asked. When you think about Lucy Harris, you know that she put Delta State on the map. She broke ground for women's basketball and paved the way for so many other players that are playing today. Harris was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1992. But this pillar of women's basketball has one dream yet to be fulfilled. Pat Summit, Nancy Lieberman, Ann Myers, they are still in the media and they are still well known. 
well, a lot of people still uh, do not know Lucy Harris. So I want to be known too. <laughs> When we return, 